a brass cup filled to the brim with 240 milliliter of water at 4 degrees Celsius is heated to 95 degrees Celsius, how much water would overflow? The coefficient of volume expansion beta for brass is 56 times 10 to the negative 6. The beta for water is 210 times 10 to the negative 6. When water gets heated, its volume would expand by this much, delta V equals to beta times VO times the delta T. And of course, this beta is the beta for water. And the brass cup is also heated, so brass cup is also going to expand. The amount of volume change for the brass cup is beta of the brass times the VO times the delta T. The reason why water would overflow is because the water has a larger beta than the brass cup. So water is going to expand more than the cup. Therefore, water would overflow. And the amount that's going to overflow is the difference between the two delta Vs. And that's the overflow amount. So. If we want to find the amount overflow, we just need to find the difference. The difference in delta V would equal to this one minus that. And we can factor out the VO and the delta T. So this gives us the beta for H2O minus the beta for brass times the VO times the delta T, which means uh, no water would overflow if the two have the same beta. The reason why we get water overflowing is because the two betas are different. Now let's see, this uh, the beta for H2O is 210, and that's uh, 56. Of course, there's also the multiplied by 10 to the negative 6. The volume is 240 milliliters. I'm not going to change it to the cubic meters, because if I use the milliliters for the VO, I'm just going to find the delta V, the difference in delta V in milliliters as well. The change in temperature is 95 minus 4. So this will give me 3.36 milliliters of water. And this, of course, is the water at 95 degrees Celsius. It may seem weird to you that I use the 240 milliliters as the volume of the brass, while 240 milliliters is really the volume of the space inside the brass cup not the volume of the brass. Let me show you something. I have a metal ring here, and I'm going to heat it up. My question to you is, when the ring gets hotter, does the hole of the ring get bigger or smaller? Let's start with a set of room temperature ring and the ball. See, I can touch the ring. and. Uh, the ball can fit through the ring just fine. And I'm going to heat up the ball so the ball will expand and will no longer fit through the ring. It may take a while. No. See, oh, almost. Maybe a little longer. Now the ball is too big to go through. So I'm going to heat up the ring now while keeping the ball heated as well. So I'm heating, keeping both hot. Okay, so let's see. Not yet. Mm. 
Now let's see. Yep. Now the ring is hotter and the hole is bigger so the hot bigger ball can go through. One might think that the hotter ring would have a smaller hole because the metal might expand into the hole. But that is not the case. If I draw a circle on a disc made of the same material and heat the disc up, all parts of the disc would expand, including the part that is inside the circle. So this circle would get bigger and this means that if this part inside the circle is actually it's a hole, the hole would get bigger when it is heated. This works the same way for a brass cup. If we pretend that the brass cup is filled with a 240 milliliter chunk of brass, when the cup gets heated, this space expands exactly as the 240 milliliter chunk of brass. That's why we could treat the cavity as 240 milliliter of brass and use this method to solve the problem.